a little heated right now. I'm very frustrated. I just hearing uh, Justin Trudeau's comments there, where he said that um, you know they would continue to take action on anti-black racism. I actually don't know what he's talking about, and it makes me so frustrated to hear that after doing so much in the last year to speak, uh, as Dr. Ogusu Bempa just said, um, about all of these issues and just reading today um, the first comment made by the girl who recorded the video and how much it affected her and how justice will always allied her, George Floyd and his family, Regis Korczynski Paquette and their family, Clive Mensa and his family, and all of the other names. And it just makes me so <laughs> enraged to hear Justin Trudeau make these empty statements because he thinks that he can get away with it when they haven't done anything to try to address anti-Black racism. After a summer of over 200 rallies and protests across the country, not a single measure was in the budget to try to deal with some of the issues in policing affecting Black Canadians and Indigenous Canadians and people with mental health crises and so many people who live in poverty. And I just, I'm really enraged uh, right now. Let's bring in uh, Akwasi, and then I want to come back to you, Sandy, just with respect to what you would be looking at uh, insofar as concrete measures are concerned from, from, from the federal level. But Akwasi, uh, let's bring you in. Uh, what, what would you think uh, the government should be doing at this stage uh, to address uh, some of the concerns uh, some, that some of these communities uh, may have? First and foremost, I'd like to see a formal apology from the government of Canada for the historical and contemporary treatment of black people. We've seen uh, apologies. This, this is the government of apologies. Uh, we saw one last week uh, directed to Italian Canadians, and we've had nothing of the likes um, with respect to our black communities. And, uh, you know, there has been discussion of addressing anti-black racism, and, you know, there's allocation of some funding in the budget for uh, measures to address anti-black uh, racism and, and to uh, advance economic empowerment. Uh, but I think an apology would go a long way to help us understand and, and come to grips with the reality of what's got us to this place in the first place, or to this position in the first place. I think importantly to Sandy's point with respect to meaningful change in the policing realm, we have seen uh, attention to, we've seen promises, we haven't seen any action yet on the economic empowerment piece, which I think is very important. We need to recognize that uh, when, when black people are confronted by the police, when we see the statistics demonstrated that black people are overrepresented in everything from stop and search through to the, the use of uh, lethal force and, and police homicides, that that's not simply a policing problem, that that's a societal problem. Nevertheless, we could see meaningful change with respect to increased accountability within the realm of policing. We need to see, and, and, and we've had these discussions before, about taking many of the tasks the police are doing uh, at the moment away from them and with the funds uh, associated with that going to other areas of our society. But we need to understand, I think, in a very real way, and I think Canadians need to understand, Torontonians need to understand, that this is not simply a policing problem, that this is a societal problem that is rooted in structural anti-Black racism. Until we adequately understand that, we address that from both history to the present, we are going to continue to see these um, unfortunate uh, policing events happen time and time again. Thank you, Akwasi. Sandy, I'm really intrigued uh, by this, this idea of economic empowerment. W let's make this crunchy right now. What does that look like for you? So if you're, if let's say you have a meeting uh, with the government of Canada and you would like to propose uh, some economic reform, let's say, for lack of a better term, what would that look like? What do you think would help this community uh, move forward in that regard? Well, I wouldn't suggest economic reforms in those ways because here's part of the problem. The police tend to focus on people, on communities that are existing in poverty. And so if we do provide some economic uh, relief or programs for certain people, that doesn't lift everybody out of poverty. The police are still going to be uh, to be targeting communities that live in poverty. Okay. And so for okay. me, the, 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 the solutions are to do things like why taking the responsibility away from the police of harassing uh, people who are homeless, stop harassing people who uh, don't have homes at all, right. stop criminalizing people who live in particular areas, defund the police, take them out of our schools. These sorts of measures are institutional measures that make systemic 
change on the ground. Okay. This is what we need. And the government has not done a single thing uh, to try to address those systemic realities that uh, policing, uh, how policing impact black communities. All right, Sandy, thank you for that. Akwasi, I want to give you an opportunity to react to that. So you, you believe that some economic empowerment uh, may be the solution. Can you react to that, please? I think economic empowerment is part of the solution. I think Sandy's completely right. Um, providing economic opportunity to some is not going to lift all out of poverty. But unfortunately, we have an experience of slow violence. We have a deprivation, um, a, a historical deprivation that pervades um, numerous, many communities, uh, and particularly the black community. And by uh, providing uh, opportunities, increasing um, the economic viability of communities, we build the social networks, the economic networks, the okay. professional networks that may bring, along with those people, others out of the situations that they're in.